This is the Hobby King BFG 2.6 meter powered glider. I installed 16 SunPower Maxion solar cells on the wing. My intent with this project was to use it for long duration FPV slope soaring or thermaling. The plane's power system is made to run off a 4 cell LiPo, but I'm using a 2 cell LiPo with a much larger prop. I'll go into the specifics on the power system and the solar cells towards the end of this video. Here's some narrated FPV where I also explain more info on the system. It has 2.4 GHz video and a Dragon Link for control. And I've got 16 sun powered Maxion solar cells. It's not definitely not enough cells to be able to power it entirely, but it should definitely help a little bit um, with extending the flight time. The cells are tied directly into the battery. Um, it's a really simple circuit. There's no charge controller or anything like that. Basically, in direct sun, the cells put out about 8.7 volts, and it runs on the plane runs on two cell lipo. There's just a little bit more voltage with the solar cells than the battery needs, so it should just charge the battery. And then I just be careful not to overcharge the battery. The cells don't put out that much current, so overcharging the battery usually is not a problem. So this is a pretty big glider, so it should be able to slope soar or thermal pretty well. So I'm gonna just look for some thermals. And what you're hearing, that beeping, is the Team Black Sheep variometer that's on board. Um, it's basically a barometric pressure sensor that uh, tells you whether you're climbing or descending based on the tone. So when it's a higher pitched tone, you're climbing. And when it's a lower pitched tone, like what you're hearing right now, you're descending. So it doesn't seem like there's any thermal activity over these bushes because my throttle's all the way down. I was gliding that whole time. I'm gonna throttle back up and kind of fly back up to where I am now. It'll be interesting to see how the onboard uh, HD camera video looks. That's the new Fox Ear camera. One thing I like about it is that it has a super view mode similar to the GoPro. So you can fit a lot of image in a 16 by nine aspect ratio frame. So this hill I'm flying over right now is the first place I ever tried to paraglide. It's just a really gradual hill, so I figured it would be a safe place to learn to try and get off the ground. Yeah, it was uh, a little bit too mellow and I was not able to get off the ground. So now I'm coming up to a dam and a reservoir. I think, I have a theory that this hill right in front of me will have some lift from a uh, ridge lift or slope lift. Probably some thermals too, so I'm gonna go up there and check it out. This is like one of the really cheap little Hobby King OSDs, but all I really use it for is telling me my voltage. I honestly don't know why the speed and altitude doesn't work, because it does have a GPS, but I guess it just uh, decided not to work today. Okay, I'm throttling down to see if I can thermal in this lift at all. Another bad thing about this plane is that like they don't they don't include a braking ESC so that the prop folds back when it's gliding so I need to replace the stock ESC with one that I can program to do braking so that the prop folds back but I must say this airframe is like one of my favorite airframes of all time in fact after I flew it for the first time I went home and tried to buy another one but I guess they don't sell them anymore so that's unfortunate okay now I'm a little too low for comfort here. So I'm gonna throttle back up. Definitely not possible to thermal, at least with the skill level that I have right now. <laughs> so I'm actually using two 3000 milliamp hour two cells in parallel, and these are pretty old batteries. Like one of them is really puffy, and the other one has overcharged written on it. Whatever that means, I don't really remember overcharging it, but... So I'm definitely pretty sure that I'm losing altitude all in all here, but I haven't used my motor in a long time, so there's definitely lift to be found. I'm kind of surprised the battery voltage isn't going up more from charging from the solar cells. I really don't even know for sure if the solar cells are actually doing anything, because what I really need is a, an OSD current 
reader to go in between the solar cells and the battery so I know how much power is actually coming out of the solar cells um, so I should get that set up I think I bought an OSD to do that another OSD to do that with I just haven't installed it and it's really hard to like theoretically if you have the right amount of solar cells to generate the right voltage and the right uh, the right voltage of battery in relation to the solar cells you can get it to be really efficient where the cells will create just enough voltage to charge the battery um, efficiently but it takes a lot of testing to be able to determine the right combination and I didn't really do a lot of testing for this I just kinda threw on as many solar cells as I could and then decided to use a two cell battery because the cells were producing just over the amount of voltage that a two cell uses so I definitely need to do some work as far as determining the right combo there. So I just throttled up for the first time in a while since I was at the top of that ridge line again. Now I'm going to go back to full throttle and climb up the ridge line once again. Okay, I'm going to throttle down again. So my motor is off. Looks like I'm rising right here. So this mountain straight ahead that you see there, that's a good place that I've paraglided on quite a bit. When I was learning, actually, the first time I flew away from uh, an actual flight park, the first hike and fly I did was on this mountain right here. I almost wish that I didn't put solar cells on this plane, just because... It, uh, the solar cells aren't that smooth on the top of the wing, so it would probably glide a lot better without them. Although, I must say, the battery voltage hasn't been dropping that much. Like what, it was at, when I was flying along that ridge line at no throttle for a while, it was at like 7.6, and now it's only at 7.48. So it hasn't dropped that much, so I do think the solar cells are helping. I'm at about half throttle right now, just cruising. It's definitely windier right now. At least it is right here. I don't know about where the plane is. I wasn't able to get too much lift from over there. So now I'll throttle back up and kind of fly towards myself. I really hope that new Fox Ear camera is still on there because it's just held on with a bunch of masking tape. What I, what I want to do is find, or at least try to find, the uh, amount of throttle that's required just to sustain a consistent altitude. And then figure out if the solar cells alone are able to sustain that amount of throttle. And then I can go back to my yard or wherever and use a multimeter or a current meter to uh, test and see if the solar cells are able to put out that amount of power. Because it would be kind of potentially cool to wire the cells directly into the motor so that you're running on nothing but solar power. Um, then the challenge is your throttle kind of acts like an MPPT controller where if you put your throttle too high this it'll be less efficient because the voltage drops too much. Um, so you have to find a sweet spot where you're getting a sweet spot in the middle where you're kind of getting the most uh, juice from the cells. I don't know, I'd have to fly somewhere pretty safe, like kind of out by the salt flats or somewhere where I have a lot of space where I can just climb using nothing but solar power and see how it goes. Oh, maybe this is like a 12 volt camera and now the voltage is down to seven, so it's getting strange. We'll see, I just drop my throttle to let the voltage go back up and the video does look like it's improving a little bit, but not all that much. Well, I should probably land. I think the battery is like starting to drop voltage a lot. Okay, I need to land ASAP. That was kind of brutal. I would not be surprised if the prop got screwed up from that landing, since it doesn't fold back. It definitely got chewed up a little bit. The Fox Ear camera is still there. Although it stopped recording. Wow, it feels a lot smoother. That's funny. I think it was out of balance before and now it smacked the ground on landing and balanced itself. 
After that FPV flight, I connected the solar cells directly to a power meter and then to the motor in order to measure how much power they will produce. Surprisingly, they were only generating 2 amps, which kind of suggests something is wrong because it should be able to produce about 6 amps at their peak efficiency. This could partially be because of the covering film over the wing, or it could be that some of the cells cracked when they were being bent to follow the contour of the airfoil. Now, these cells are supposed to be slightly flexible, and they are supposed to still be able to produce 100% of their potential power even if they are cracked. But perhaps one of the cracks is deeper than usual, and it's reducing the efficiency in some way. Anyhow, the amount of power they produce is definitely enough to let you fly all day if you're slope soaring and don't need the motor. I tested the efficiency of the solar cells at charging the battery at different voltages to help find the optimal battery voltage to number of solar cells combination. As you can see by this plot, the cells were charging the battery much faster when the battery was nearly dead. This means I probably need a slightly higher voltage from the solar cells in order to have them constantly charge the battery more quickly when the motor is off. I also measured the current draw required to maintain a consistent altitude, and it was 7.8 amps. So this plane has no hope of flying off solar power alone, but it will be good for long duration slope soaring. Stay tuned for more of that later. I'm still working on my other solar plane project that I do intend to fly continuously, so don't confuse this with that. Thanks for watching, bye.